falling But I can't stand a sound I hear the angels I can't stand a sound Very welcome in Rhodes. It's the first time, uh, or you don't travel that much with Walter. Are you on the road with him now more often since the kids are growing older? I am. I am much more. Uh, you know, I've I, I've also had a couple of side projects, like my my dissertation, my my degree, my book, and and of course the kids. And much of my work really happens behind the desk at home. So that's where I tend to be, to be focused on what I need to do. But now that some of this has already been done, I can go much more out and be part of what happens out here and see what's really going on, which is very helpful as well, because I am Walter's manager as well and have been for 25 years. So being more involved on the road as well is, is helpful. It's great. Plus, I get to spend time with Walter. Right. Yeah. And you mentioned the book. Uh, what made you do it? It, it was your dissertation, yeah. so Dr. Marie Trout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, well, after watching for 20-some years, um, that people come into concerts with Walter and other bands looking one way. They are stressed, they have like lines in their face, and you know, they behave one way. And then they go through the concert and they come out and they look different. They look lighter. They look like something happened in there. And I've always been curious about what happens in this process of music. And I couldn't really find any good research on it. I could find plenty of research on what the blues is historically and what it used to mean for people in a historical setting. Uh, but today, blues music has a completely different audience, and it has a different, I think, role to play, but still an important one. And that's the, the work I was hoping to just dig down, or if you will, open the sort of the hood of the car I've been driving for all these years, the blues car with the blues band, and see what are the components that make this music still powerful and transformative today. Marie, uh, you're from Denmark. You met Walter in Denmark, as far as I know. What attracted you to blues concerts to have the possibility to meet Walter? Hmm. Well, I, I was out of college a few years previously, and I started my own business. And I guess you could say I was one of those people that came into concerts with lines in my face and I was stressed out by it. And I just found in this kind of music particularly, there was a power and there was something that freed me. And bands that were good at doing that attracted me. That was something that I pursued in my spare time um, as an antidote, if you will, to the stress and the um, the sort of rig rigor of my day-to-day -day routine. And so it was, um, I mean, Walter and I are a perfect example of opposites attract. He is a creative, crazy man, and I'm very much a, a very sort of structured, much more serious person. 
but the two of us together, we really work well. You know, there's, he gets the best out of me, I think, and I get some really good things out of him. So going in to see this music, I don't know. There was, there was a very strong attraction from the first moment we met each other, both from me to his music, but also from he and I as people. Being structured, I guess it was very helpful during the hard times when Walter was that sick and waiting, fighting for his life, in, especially then in Omaha, in, in, in the hospital. Uh, you kept uh, the family together, you had your boys going to school, and you kept uh, all the blues community informed what's going on. Uh, I remember you sent me mails at four o'clock in the morning, mm. your time. So, uh, where did you take the strength from and how helpful was this ability to structure your day? Those are two big questions, really. Um, the, the, my ability to structure and be a, a sort of a business-minded person, that's just who I am. But one of the problems with that mindset is also you tend to have a sense of I can, I can do this and be very proud and be very um, closed about emotions and about what's really happening in your life. And I found in the situation where Walter was ill, that became a problem for me because now I carried everything. I carried, as you said, with the kids, I carried with Walter, I carried with the business that was still going on, not knowing what was going to happen with it, and I carried the whole medical bill situation, which in America is a big problem. You, you have to pay a lot of money when you're sick and don't have an income. So being a very proud business person, I was not going to let anybody know that I was suffering inside. But what was interesting about the research I had done about blues music and the stories that people had told me about blues music, that became an inspiration for me to open up and to um, let other people in. And it was very difficult for me to do the fundraiser, for, for example, because it's an, it's an opposite of what I wanted to see myself as somebody, I can handle this. But it became such a help because doing the fundraiser not only allowed people to help us financially, which was a lifesaver, we could take him to Omaha. I had to have the kids at home with a caregiver. We had to, you know, I had to rent a car and an apartment in Omaha, and, and it was very expensive to do this option. So the fundraiser allowed that. But it also allowed me to learn to open up about what was going on in my life and invite people in and say, I really need you now. And I found that the kindness and the love from people like you and many other uh, fans and friends and people, complete strangers to me and, and maybe to Walter too, they just stood there and helped us every day. It was an amazing experience. So the two sides of me, you could say they both grew. I had to learn to be still structured and organize everything, but not so closed and rigid about it, but learn to open up and be more um, willing to be open and transparent. We're lost and alone Seems so 